eating all the time, you're stimulating your insulin all the time, insulin stays high, stays high, never gets a chance to come down. And because your insulin doesn't come back down again, you're always in a storage mode. This high insulin is the problem we've hormonally changed because we're eating too frequently. We were not designed to eat that frequently. And there's a lot of misunderstanding about what high blood pressure is. And yet, if there's one thing that you want to really control is high blood pressure because it can cause heart attacks, atherosclerosis, strokes, blindness, proof of vascular disease, kidney failure. So high blood pressure is very important and it's totally misunderstood. So as a cardiologist, I see patients with high blood pressure, but they already have end organ damage. So today I want to tell you what the incomplete workup of high blood pressure is. Traditionally, when patients come to see us for high blood pressure, we say that, oh, 95% of them are primary essential hypertension. Well, over the years, I've realized there's nothing essential about high blood pressure. You don't have to have it. And the 5% have a secondary cause, such as kidney failure or some sort of a tumor in the body. But majority of them don't seem to have a cause for it. And therefore, the next thing is we take out the prescription pad and we give you blood pressure medications. And that's right, we do want to get the blood pressure down and you do want to get on the medications now, early, before you start developing end organ damage. But the incomplete examination, I want you to think about the things that I'm going to tell you next. Over the years, I've realized that many, many patients actually can reverse their high blood pressure, unlike what I was taught in medical school that essential hypertension is just essential. So the number one thing I've realized is that metabolic syndrome causes high blood pressure. If you reverse metabolic syndrome, high blood pressure goes away. What is metabolic syndrome? Metabolic syndrome is a cluster of high blood pressure, you have a low HDL, a high triglyceride, you have, you're overweight, your body mass index is over 25, and particularly most of the mass is around the belly. And if you look around, there's a lot of people with this condition. Look, right now, more than 50% of our population is overweight. Frankly, obese. It is a symptom of metabolic disease. Now, not all obese patients or overweight patients have metabolic syndrome. We know that. 80% of the patients who are overweight have metabolic syndrome. But being overweight is only a symptom of metabolic syndrome. So this metabolic condition, this underlying metabolic syndrome can cause obesity because when you have high insulin levels, you're gonna get obesity. So how, how is high blood pressure happening in patients with metabolic syndrome, whether they're obese or not? What's happening is that it's the insulin. Insulin really paralyzes the arteries and the arterioles. So they don't appropriately vasodilate. So when you have high insulin levels due to a condition called insulin resistance, which is part of metabolic syndrome and the problem with, with your metabolism, you get high blood pressure. And over the last 10 years that I've been actually treating metabolic syndrome aggressively in my office here, and we reverse metabolic syndrome through a diet, exercise and weight loss, and changing to non-processed, non-refined foods, nothing artificial. I'm finding that the metabolic condition gets better, blood pressure gets better, and the weight automatically comes down. Now, this should scare all of you, and I hope that you take this home. It takes 10 to 15 years of pre-diabetes to develop diabetes. That means the process actually starts in your 30s and 40s when the bad lifestyle and the sugar intake and the frequency of eating causes hyperinsulinemia. So you have high insulin. So now when I eat a meal, instead of making this much insulin, I have to have this much insulin. And as the years go by, I make more and more and more insulin. Why am I making more insulin? Because I'm becoming resistant to insulin. Why am I becoming resistant to insulin? Because it's a hormone. So what? Well, a hormone has to be cyclical. How do women not ovulate when you give them the birth control? Because it's supposed to have periodic variations in the hormonal levels. But when you have a constant level of the hormone, the body doesn't respond to it, so you don't ovulate anymore, right? That's how birth control works. Now we think that we can have constantly elevated insulin levels because we're eating every two, three hours, and we're eating processed foods and refined foods, and then you expect the body to respond with insulin? Well, you'll make insulin, but your body will not respond to it. So what happens as the years go by, you start having to make a gallon of insulin at each meal. So then the question really you should be asking me is that then dark, but the sugar is under good control, so what's wrong with that? Well, you missed the boat. All of us miss the boat. The doctors miss the boat. It's not the sugar that's hurting you so much. 20% of the 
the bad stuff in your in your heart and your arteries and your body and your brain and your kidneys is because of the high sugar but 80% because of the high insulin you see we eat 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 insulin comes in puts everything into storage so you build up some fat and then you're supposed to live so when you live you now start utilizing your calories and you start burning the sugar when that goes out after maybe about 4 hours or 5 hours then the glycogen stores in your liver and in your muscles start breaking down start giving you the calories that you really need to burn so you can run do your day to day activities and all that and when you run out of that by let's say about 18 hours or 20 hours and then the body says hmm i need to start burning fat now that's what you're supposed to do that's why you put on fat in the first place that's why we have fat it's a storage and then you start burning that fat and therefore you start burning that fat so the fat comes out comes into your liver gets converted to some ketones perhaps and now you're making ketones and the ketones are being utilized for energy and then uh, you go for your next meal again so the body was made to do this it was not made to just pile on pile on pile on all the time so the biochemistry of the body was made for feeding fasting cycles and this is the way the bioengineering of our body was but we became dysfunctional because as food became more available we just kept piling it on and on and on and on and that's the problem that we have today is exactly what you said excessive calories too frequently so our insulin levels stay high all the time so that's the biggest problem i found as a cardiologist you eating all the time you stimulating your insulin all the time insulin stays high stays high never gets a chance to come down and because your insulin doesn't come back down again you always in a storage mode this high insulin is the problem we've hormonally changed because we eating too frequently we were not designed to eat that frequently the whole thing comes down to insulin for me it was now as things happen i discovered more and more fun things as in this fantastic journey but the bottom line is it was the high insulin level that really got me into this because i found that when i brought the insulin levels down my coronary artery disease atherosclerosis just went down patients did so much better and that high insulin level only thing i know that really helps to bring that insulin level down besides metformin and a few other drugs really is fasting yeah because when you don't eat guess what you don't make insulin that's it your yeah. insulin levels yeah. plummet and then the next time you eat you make insulin but a much less amount because you're not sensitive so this fasting i got into it through this way not because I, i just wanted to make them reduce weight not yeah. because i just wanted to reduce blood pressure it was really the insulin that got me into fasting then of course i discovered as time went on oh my god the blood pressures were coming down and i realized that insulin is a vasoconstrictor it reduces nitric oxide in your blood vessels so therefore your blood vessels can't dilate now that brings me to hypertension that i said oh my god i was taught and you were taught that 95% of hypertension is essential and this very word essential <laughs> there's nothing essential about hypertension we don't have enough resources we don't have enough time so what we can do is we can educate patients and we can throw light on the issues that have brought them to where they are now and show them how they can get out of it show them empower them and educate them so that they make their decisions and when they make their decisions they will do it yeah. and then yeah. it's 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 self empowering it feeds back on themselves and say look look I was able to do this and I didn't think I could do this and, and so that brings us to that issue that there are so many layers of onions that we can peel off and fasting is the one that really seems to me to open up aspects of their lifestyle which they would not have otherwise looked at because fasting does bring in lots of issues into their life it, it opens up the introspection into their life it's so what's going on what's driving these things in my life yeah, and that's yeah. what i like about fasting it's 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 so different i mean imagine if i just give them a diet and say okay you're just going to eat this um okay they're going to eat that that's it but in fasting it's self control it's deeper thinking about the habits